Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Toki Ni Andy Genki 2 Lesson 15 live stream. Today, we're going to be covering the volitional form, which is like, let's do something. Resolutions with the volitional form, doing things in preparation with te oku, and modifying nouns with entire sentences. Here is the color codes for you. And before we get started, I'm going to bring this up really quick. If you'd like to help support Toki Ni Andy channel and all of these lessons, please check out the Patreon where we have textbook practice videos, listening and shadowing videos, vocabulary videos, tests for all of Genki 1 and eventually all of Genki 2. We've got a merch store and a few other things. And one of the best things you can do is just hit the like button, share this video with anyone you know who's studying Japanese, and uh, study hard yourself. All right, guys, are you ready? We are going to be covering the volitional form. It might look a little complicated, but I promise you it's not that complicated at all. So the volitional form basically means let's or shall we do something with when combined with something else, which I'll show you later. So keep that in mind. It just means let's do something. So before we can get started with the volitional form, what we need to do is we need to do a crash course in Godan conjugation. If you want a full overview of what Godan conjugation is and you're watching on the replay, there will be a link over here that goes into detail the Japanese names of each type of conjugation and everything. It's actually quite simple. So, Godan conjugation crash course, here we go. Verbs that end in utsu, mu, bu, nu, ku, gu, su, and sometimes do are Godan verbs. Verbs that end in iru or eru, those sounds, not necessarily the characters iru and eru, but the, the sound i followed by the character du and the sound e followed by the character du, those are usually Ichidam verbs. Not always, but most of the time they're Ichidam verbs. Now I'll go over what those are as we go on. So, to conjugate a Godan verb, all you need to do is move it from its dictionary form, which is right here. This is the verb aruku, to walk. So the dictionary form is aruku. So that's right here in this hiragana chart. And if you move it up the chart, we get aruki. And if you move it down the chart, you get aruke. And then what's going to happen is as you move it up and down the chart, you add some other ending. So, for example, if we go back up to aruki and add masu, we get arukimasu, and that's the polite present tense. For example, okay? Aruke, actually on its own, is a command, and arukeru means can walk. So there, that's just different kinds of conjugations you can do with godan verbs. Now, to make the volitional form of godan verbs, what you do is you move down to the o column. So aruku becomes aruko, and then you add u. So, aruku, aruko, aruko. So, you, you extend it. Aruko. It's basically extending it. Okay? And that's the volitional form of godan verbs. That's it. That's all you have to do. You move down to the o column, add u. For ichidan verbs, and that's remember ones that end in the sound iru or edu, all you have to do is cut off the du and add yo. For example, midu, you cut the du and add yo. Miyo. So before we had aruko, that means let's walk. Miyo means let's look. That's it. That's the volitional form. There are these irregular verbs. They're always irregular verbs. Suru and kuru. Suru becomes shio, so you have to change everything. Kuru becomes koyo, so you have to be careful. The sound of the first character changes. Kuru becomes koyo. Now, if you add ka, the question marker to the end of the volitional, it means shall we something something. Not big eyes, shall we something something. So, arukouka means shall we walk? And that's the volitional form, guys. So let's go ahead and go over some example sentences and uh, see if we can make that a little bit more understandable. So, kao is the verb to buy. The volitional is kao, let's buy, or let's buy it. Oyogu is the verb for swim, which becomes oyogo, oyogo, let's swim. Nomu is the verb to drink, so nomoka means shall we drink. Miyoka means shall we look. I feel like that's pretty simple, but you guys let me know a little bit later if it's not, or let me know down in the comments if you're watching this on the replay. All right, so some more complicated sentences. We have hon wo kao, let's buy a book. Kyo wa ii tenki da ne. It's nice weather today, isn't it? Oyogi ni ikouka, shall we go swim? So here we, the volitional form is the attached iku. So oyogi ni iku, iku means to go and swim. So you have to turn that last iku into the volitional form to make the whole thing volitional, right? Oyogi ni ikou. Oyogi ni ikouka, 
Shall we go swim? そのことが本当にあったかな調べよう。I wonder if that thing really happened. そのことはが本当にあったかな I wonder if that thing really existed. I wonder if that thing really happened. Let's investigate. She, let's, um, investigate is しらべる。So, しらべよう。It's an edu verb. Because べ、it ends in the e sound followed by do. So, you cut the do, add yo. しらべよう。Let's investigate. おそくなりそうだね。It looks like they will become late. はじめようか Shall we start? You might hear this at like a drinking party or at a meeting or something. Someone looks like they're going to become late. おいおそくなりそうだね。はじめようか Shall we start? Shall we start eating or shall we start drinking or shall we start the meeting? Basically, like that. おそくなりそうだね。はじめようか So let's go ahead and jump into the dialogue. I'll read it slowly one time, then at full speed, then I'll go over the English and I'll get to the practice section. And after that, I can take questions. ねえ、お腹すいている。ラーメン食べに行こうぜ。いや、うちで食べようよ。えー、でも、ラーメン食べたい。じゃあ、ラーメンを作ろう。うん、そうしよう。手伝おうかうん、大丈夫だよ。はい、フォースピード。ねえ。お腹空いている。ラーメン食べに行こうぜ。いや、うちで食べようよ。えー、でも、ラーメン食べたい。じゃあ、ラーメンを作ろう。うん、そうしよう。手伝おうかうん、大丈夫だよ。はい、let's get to the English. ね、お腹空いている。ラーメン食べに行こうぜ。Hey, I'm hungry. お腹空いている means I'm hungry. You often drop the particle, it, it should be お腹が空いている would be the full sentence, but in conversation, especially with this phrase, the が is very frequently dropped. お腹空いているラーメンを食べに行こうぜ Once again, in conversation, we often drop the O in this situation. ラーメン食べに,食べに行こうぜ Let's go eat ramen. So once again, it's 食べに行く So you, you conjugate the 行く into the volitional. 食べに行こうぜ Let's go eat ramen. Ze is, it's just like yo, but it's a masculine yo, very similar to zo. Zo and ze are very similar when they're used as ending particles in meaning. They're basically just exclamation points like, yeah, let's do it. Ya, uchi de tabe yo yo. No, let's eat at home. Tabe yo yo. Kataru, add yo for tabe du. Ya is like na, na, no. Eh? I translated this as seriously. Demo, ramen wo tabe, ramen ga tabe tai. Once again, we drop the particle usually when we are in conversation. Not usually, but very frequently. Ramen tabe tai. I want to eat ramen. Ja, ramen wo tsukuro. Let's make ramen. Mm, so shi yo. Let's do that. So, that, that should be green. Shi yo, let's do. Tetsudaoka. Tetsudao is to help. So shall I help you? Tetsudaoka. Mmm. Nah. Daijobu dayo. This daijobu dayo means it's okay. You don't have to help, is what that implies. It's okay. So our practice section for this, this、uh, section is You're coming to visit Japan, everyone. I want you to tell me something that you want to do together with me and Yuki or with us. Okay, so tell me something you want to do together with us or with your friends that you're coming here with if you don't want to hang out with us, if we're, you're too cool for us. What I would say is, ramen mo tabe yo! Let's eat ramen! So go ahead and you guys can make some sentences using the volitional form and any verb that you want of something you want to do together with us when we get to Japan or with whoever you're going to Japan with. All right, our next section is resolutions using the volitional. This is also a very, very simple section. First, you need the volitional form. You just learned how to make that. If you didn't, click back on the timestamp if you're watching this in the replay, and you can learn how to make that. So, you take the volitional form, which you just learned how to make, and you add to omote imas. That's the te iru form of to omo. Omote imas. And that means that you've made a resolution or a decision, and you've already made it. It's been made in the past. You've decided you're going to do whatever this verb is. 
You made a decision to do that thing. You'll see in the example sentences what this means more. A decision made on the spot, like right now, you take the volitional end to omoimas. That's what the difference is between to omotte imas and to omoimas. To omotte imas means the decision was made in the past and you're talking about it now. A decision made on the spot while you're talking to a person or just right now is to omoimas along with the volitional. So you'll remember that masho is also the volitional, but it's the more polite form. You cannot use the polite form volitional here. It has to be the short form volitional. So for example, with taberu, you can't say tabemasho to omotte imasu. You have to say tabeyo to omotte imasu. It has to be the short form volitional. So I think you're going to need some example sentences to see what I mean. So let's go ahead and take a look at kao to omotte imasu. I intend or decided to buy it. You can think of this like I have been thinking about buying it or I have been thinking to buy it. That's what, that's probably a better way. It just doesn't sound very good in English, but I have been thinking, I have been thinking to buy it. Uh, better English would be I intend or decided to buy it. Kao to omoimasu. So here we have omoimasu instead of omoteimasu. That's I think I'll buy it. So I'm at the store. You know what? I think I'm going to buy this. Kao to omoimasu. That's, that's the difference there. It's something you didn't plan on coming to the store to buy. Like, um, I went to Best Buy or whatever. I'm like, I'm going to buy this new computer. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Or I just see another a monitor that I really want over here. Or a camera. Oh, I want that camera, actually. You know what? I just saw that camera for the first time ever. I'm going to buy it. Next sentence, same kind of example. I intend or decided to look into it. Shiraberu is to look into or to investigate. So I decided to look into it. I have been thinking about looking into it. Shirabeyo uh, to uh, omoimasu means I think I'll look into it. So someone just told you some new information. Hmm, shirabeyo to omoimasu. I think I'm going to look into that. I'm not so sure. Some more complicated sentences. Kono kuruma ga furui kara atarashii no o kao to omotte imasu. This car is old, so I intend to buy a new one. You could also read this as this car is old, so I have been thinking to buy a new one. Kono kuruma ga furui kara atarashii no o kao to omotte imasu. So this no is taking the place. I believe we covered this quite a while ago somewhere in Genki 1. This is taking the place of kuruma. Because saying, Kono kuruma ga furui kara atarashi kuruma o kao to omotte imasu. That's very repetitive. So you can use no in place of it. Kono kuni wa samusugiru kara kairo to omotte imasu. So here, kono kuni is the new topic. It just came up in the conversation. That's why we're using wa instead of ga. New topic in the conversation. Perhaps this conversation was going on for a while. Kono kuni wa samusugiru kara. This country is too cold. So, kairo to omotte imasu. I have been thinking I'll go home. Or I think I'll go home. I intend to, or I have been thinking, to call tomorrow. These are some very common examples you might hear this used in. This one is pretty common. I think I'm, I've been thinking about calling him tomorrow. Don't feel like doing it right now. <laughs> All right, that brings us to our dialogue. I'm going to read it slowly one time, and then I'll read it full speed. We will go over the English, we'll do a practice section, and I'll get to your questions. So, here we go. If you have any questions and you're watching this on the replay, please drop those down in the comments, and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Art, on the phone. Moshi, moshi. Y-san? Ah, R-san. Ohayou gozaimasu. Kyou mo o hiru wo tabei ni, tabei ni ikimashou ka? いや、今月家で食べようと思っています。そうか。新しいイタリア料理のレストランができましたが、どうしたの？ニューパーソン。R さんと食べに行こうと思います。何？ Remember, we were just going to make ramen. Maybe this is the next day or something. Moshimoshi, Y-san? Ah, R-san, ohayou gozaimasu. Kyou mo o hiru o tabe ni ikimashou ka? Ya, kongetsu iede tabeyou to omotte imasu. Sou ka? Sou desu ka? 
新しいイタリア料理のレストランができましたが、クリック。どうしたの ?R さんと食べに行こうと思います。何 ?Let's go with the English. もしもし、Y さん ?Hello, Y? あ、R さん。おはようございます。Oh, R. Good morning. 今日もお昼を食べに行きましょうか Shall we go and eat lunch again today? 今日も、so today as well today. So they've gone to eat lunch before, probably many days in a row. お昼を食べに行こう、行きましょうか So you're using 行きましょう instead of 行こう We're in a polite situation. いや、今月家で食べようと思っていますね。I've decided or I have been thinking to eat at home this month. 食べようと思っています。そうですか。新しいイタリア料理のレストランができましたが。Is that so? That's too bad. A new Italian restaurant was finished or completed, but. できました can be like something was completed. They, they finished making something. Stuff like that. どうしたの What's up? What's wrong? R さんと食べに行こうと思います。I've just decided to go eat with R. What? 何 Alright. So, the practice for this section is What is one thing you plan on doing in the new year? And this is what I plan on doing in the new year. I've been thinking I will eat ramen in the new year. Doing things in preparation with te oku. Te oku. To say you're doing something in preparation for something else in Japanese, you just take the te form of any verb and add oku. Now, this oku comes from the verb oku, which is to place something or to put something, for example, on a table. And there is a kanji for that, but when you use this form, te oku, you're not going to use the kanji for the verb oku, which is once again to place something. Now, you conjugate, when you conjugate it, you conjugate oku as a godan verb, so you just conjugate it like this. Shite oku. Shite okimasu. Shite oko. You can use the volitional. Shite okimasho. You can use the polite volitional. Shite oita. Uh, past tense. Shite okimashita. Polite past tense. So you, you just conjugate it like a godan verb. I just wanted to point that out here. You're conjugating the oku part. Now, when you use te oku, which I'm going to get into the example sentences soon, but I just want to mention really quickly that in conversation, te oku often becomes toku. So, by the way, this is suru. Suru becomes shite, right? Shite would, will often become shitoku. In conversation. So if you're listening to a TV show or you're listening to anime or you're listening to someone you know talking to you, if they say shitoku or tabetoku, they're talking about te oku. This is very, very common in conversation. You're not gonna see it in books or anything unless it's a,、um, a dialogue. But in conversation, almost all the time, shite oite becomes shitoite. Shite oita becomes shitoita. Shite oko becomes shitoko. Shitoko. Right? It's a little bit confusing, but just know that that's how it will show up a lot in conversation. So let's go over some example sentences so we can get a better hang of this. Katte oko means let's buy it or let's buy something in preparation for something. So, for example, if we have a party this week, we have a party this Sunday, and we're at the store right now, it's Friday. And We're thinking, should, do we need to buy beer? It's like, I think we have some at home, but maybe we need some more. So we should probably buy some just in case or ahead of time. In that situation, you're going to use te oko. So, katte oko, biru o, katte oko. Let's buy this beer in preparation for the party on Sunday. Let's buy it ahead of time, right? Tabete oko. Let's eat in preparation for something. And then in the more complicated sentences down below, you'll get to see more of what these mean. But yeah. Tabete oko oku. Tabete oku. Tabete oku. So I'm going to eat, or I will eat, or eat in preparation for something. Yamete okimasu ka? Shall we quit in preparation for something? Kite okanakia ikemasen. So we can use the must conjugations here. Kite okanakia ikemasen. You must prepare yourself for something. By listening. So let's do some more complete sentences so you can get a better idea for how this works. Kare wo kateoko. Kare wo kateoko. 
let's buy curry in preparation for something. This in preparation for something can actually be pretty vague. Like there doesn't have to be a decided event in time. It can just be let's buy curry so that we have curry because sometimes we want to eat curry, right? So we could be at the store and just uh, uh, We should probably buy curry. And the implication is in preparation for the, the next time we actually want to eat it so that we have it. So that's another situation you can use. It's actually very common in that kind of situation. In preparation for this long day, I'm going to eat. Uh, or today is going to be very long. So in preparation for that, I'll eat a lot. I forgot to put takusan. I'll eat a lot. Takusan tabete oku. I forgot to put that in the English, but this should be I'll eat a lot. All right, here's a here's a very short conversation. Muzukashi so desu ne. It looks difficult, doesn't it? Muzukashi so nara yamete mo ii yo. Muzukashi so nara yamete yamete mo ii yo. Probably should have dropped the mo with toku. This a uh, very Casual form. It probably would be more common to just say Muzukashi so nara yametoitte ii yo. Hmm, yametoitte mo ii yo. Either way is fine. Muzukashi so desu ne. Muzukashi so nara yametoitte ii yo. Either way, right? If it looks difficult, you can go ahead and quit. You can go ahead and, because it looks difficult, it, and you're, you're quitting in preparation for it to be difficult. You know it's going to be difficult, so you're quitting ahead of time, before anything goes wrong. You're pre preparing for that. So this is a little weird. But that's the kind of situations you're going to be using it in. Let's go ahead and see if the dialogue helps you understand a little bit more. Slowly, one time, full speed. Go over the English translation. Nande ie de tabeyou to omotte irun desu ka? Takai kara uchi de tabete okou to omotte imasu. So desu ka? Nani ka kaitai mono ga arun desu ka? いいえ、特にないですよ。でも、お金をたくさん貯めて貯めておきたいです。なんで家で食べようと思っているんですか高いからうちで食べておこうと思っています。そうですか。何か買いたいものがあるんですかいいえ、特にないですよ。でも、お
ためておきたい。I want to save in preparation for something a lot of money. And I guess that's the end of that section. We'll find out why in a little bit. The description in Genki is the te form of a verb plus the helping verb oku describes an action performed in preparation for something. That's it. That's the full description in Genki. So if you just want to think about it that way and not worry about the little, the slightly more complex usages of it, I think that's fine. You're going to be able to do the exercises in here and everything perfectly fine because that's the only way I believe that they use it. But there are other ways you're going to hear it. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear people say, kare wo katte o ko in the store. And you're going to be like, in preparation for what? And it's just in preparation for sort of a, an invisible event that may come one day, probably in preparation for some time we may want to eat curry. So it can, it can be a subtle thing that you're preparing for, but it's always in preparation for something. But if you want to just think about it as more concrete events, I'm preparing to go to Japan, and that makes you understand it better. Stick with that for now. More exposure is really the only way it's going to make more sense. Y yes, I guess you only use this for a planning phase, I suppose, but you're always planning to do something all the time. So there's always something you're going to be doing in the future at all times, which means like at all times in your life, you're probably preparing to do something. It's a little philosophical, I guess, but like today I was working on a video. So everything I did in relation to that video was preparing to release it. I was working on this lesson. Everything I did in preparation for this lesson for the past two weeks, I would be using teoku to describe what I was doing. So if I was working on the slides, I would use teoku because I was making those slides in preparation for this lesson. So you use it very, very frequently because you're always preparing for something. You're going to Japan soon. What is one thing you will do in preparation? For example, chiketto wo katte oku. I'm going to buy a ticket in preparation for going to Japan. Chiketto o katte oku. I'm trying to hype everyone up for going to Japan soon, so you're going soon. What are you going to do in preparation for that? I'm going to chiketto o katte oku. I'm going to buy a ticket in preparation. Modifying nouns with sentences. This is a little bit easier. To modify a noun with a sentence, all you need is a short form sentence. So a sentence that ends in any short form verb. It can be any tense. So for example, present tense, past tense, negative. Potential form, potential negative, potential past negative. You can use anything as long as it ends in the short form. Now, modifying nouns, it's the same as modifying nouns with adjectives, e adjectives, na adjectives, whatever. It's just that you can actually do it with verbs as well. You just need to do it in the casual forms, the, the base forms, or whatever you want to call them. So, some examples of this would be karita hon, book I borrowed, karita hon, wo yatto kaishimashita. I finally returned the book I borrowed. What kind of book? The one I borrowed. Karita, hon. Well, yatto, yatto means finally. Yatto kaishimashita. Our next sentence is, Kino tsukutto itta kare wo tabete ne. Eat the curry I made yesterday, okay? Another way you could translate this in, into English would be, eat the curry I made for you. Yesterday in preparation for today. So I made that curry yesterday so that you could eat it today. Right? That's why I made the curry. Kino tsukutto itta kare wo tabete ne. Yuki will say stuff like, or I might say something like this if I gave, made lunch for her. I made that lunch so that she could eat it later. So, ano, tsukutto itta o bento wo tabete ne. It's a very common thing I say all the time because the reason I made that was. I prepared it so that she could eat it later, or she prepared it so I could eat it later. Teoku. Kino tsukutto itta kare wo tabete ne. So, but the point of this is, I am modifying the word kare with kino tsukutto itta. So, which curry? The one I made yesterday in preparation for you to eat it today. Kino tsukutto itta kare. That's what I want you to eat. The curry I made yesterday, okay? Ano toki, Takeshi to hanashite itta game wo oboete iru. Oboeteiru. Katta yo. Alright, so here's our noun. Game. And what game is it? It's the one I talked to you. I'm talking to Takeshi right now. Takeshi about that one time. So, ano toki, that one time. Takeshi to hanashite ita. Talk to you about. Hanashite ita. Talk to you about. Game. So you, I'm saying you is Takeshi. There's no san there, so you can pr pretty much assume that I'm talking to the person whose name I'm using. You usually use people's names. You don't say you. You could say anata to hanashite ita game. But if I'm talking to a person named Takeshi and I know them, it's more common for me to say Takeshi to hanashite ita game wo 
obo oboe te iru. Do you remember that game? What game? The one I talked to you about that time. Katta yo. I bought it. Hmm, that was a complicated sentence. Let's go ahead and jump into the dialogue. I'll read it slowly one time and then at full speed. Mo ie wo katta tomodachi ga ite ii na to omotte watashi mo kaitaku narimashita. Sugoi desu ne. Donna ie ga hoshi desu ka? Mmm, niwa ga hirokute. Ikkai shika nai ie ga ii to omoimasu. いいですね。私ならペットを飼える家が欲しいですね。Full speed. もう家を買った友達が行っていいなと思って私も買い,た買いたくなりました。すごいですね。どんな家が欲しいですかうん、庭が広くて一回しかない家がいいと思います。いいですね。私ならペットを飼える家が欲しいですね。Let's go over the English. So the noun here is 友達 So which friend? もう家を買った。The friend who already bought a house. もう is already. The friend who already bought a house. がいて exists. That person exists. But I, I'm, I'm connecting it to the next sentence. So I use the te form. いて。いいなと思って。I was jealous. いいな means I'm jealous basically. That's what いいな basically means. いいな I'm jealous. と思って I thought, but I want to connect it to something else. I thought it. So use the te form. 私も買いたくなりました I also became want to buy a house. We usually use became want to buy something. Sounds weird in English, but that's what we say. I also wanted to buy one because of all of this. So I became want to buy it. 買いたくなりましたすごいですね Wow. どんな家が欲しいですか What kind of house do you want? One thing, there was a lot of grammar points there. The main grammar point from this section was this right here. 友達もう家を買った That's, who, that's what's modifying 友達 It's the friend who already bought a house. That's the main part you have to worry about right now. I know there's a lot going on. ん庭が広くて一回しかない家がいいと思います。So what kind of house? We've got our noun right here. I'll tell you what kind of house. 庭が広くて一回しかない。So the verb we're using is ない the negative of ある。That's the house I'm talking about. A house with a big yard and nothing but one floor. That's what's modifying house. いいですね。私ならペットを飼える家が欲しいですね。What kind of house does our son want? Well, they want a house where they can raise pets or they can have pets. So, this is the potential form of kao, which means to have a pet or to raise a pet or to own a pet. So, pet o kaeru ie, a house where you can raise pets. So, what I want you to do is I want you to describe this picture using a full sentence or a verb. So, I want you to use a verb in any Uh, short form tense, negative, past, present.、Uh, you could also use teiru. Teiru is also perfectly fine. And describe the dog. So, inu is the noun that you're going to be modifying with a full sentence. My sentence might be, nureteiru inu, for example. Nureteiru inu, so it's a wet dog. All right, this next picture, I'm not sure how you can describe it. You can describe it in any way you want, but describe the various things on this page using a full sentence or just a verb. To modify the noun. So, for example, Hidari ni aru koppu. The cup that's on the left. Hidari ni aru koppu. Alright, guys, so that brings us to the end of the lesson 15 video. It was short, but I guess a little bit more complicated than I expected. Thumbs up. Whoa. Kogeki shite kudasai. Channel toroku mo onegai shimasu. And also hit the bell if you don't mind so you get notifications whenever we go live. So have a great night, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you learned a little something and I hope you had a good time. Arigato gozaimasu. Otskare sama deshita. Mata tsugi no video de aimashou ne.